Hello. Hi, good evening. Uh, welcome to Dark Shed Live. <coughs> Probably should have a drink before I start streaming, shouldn't I, really? Ah, how's things going? We're on uh, Series 2, Episode 4. It's Sunday, the 28th of June. Um, is it June? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yes, we're nearly in July. Ooh, how exciting. Halfway through the year. Um, right then, surprise, surprise. I'm in colour tonight. That makes a change, doesn't it? I thought it seemed appropriate given that what I was going to be working on. Um, yeah, let's just slow down for a minute. I was coming to these things just steaming ahead. Just need to chill out. So what have I been doing last week or so? Um, I've been sorting out loads of stuff. I sorted out all my negatives, catalogued them all, gave them all indexes. Haven't finished doing that yet, but I'm getting there. Um, and also I've been, you might see, I've got a little uh, setup behind me. I've been taking photos of prints ready to put online to sell. It's something I've been meaning to do for ages. I uh, haven't got round to it as always with these things. So, um, yeah, so while I've been doing that, I remembered that I actually do shoot colour from time to time and saw some negatives and some prints and stuff like, here we go, this one here. Um, handmade in dark room. So this is using the RA4 process. Is another one which <laughs> quite nicely matches my hoodie. Um, so these are made from negative film. Uh, I think they were shot with portrait, I assume they were. Um, <coughs> and that process is RA4 paper. Like this, this Fujifilm uh, Crystal Archive is the only sheet film you can get. A uh, sheet film? Sheet paper, cut paper uh, for RA4 process. Uh, you can get other paper types, Kodak do a load, but they all come in massive rolls. Um, and so this is the only stuff you can get in cut sheets. Uh, so yeah, the, the process for this is uh, same as black and white really. You kind of expose it onto the, onto the paper. You have to do it in complete darkness. That's one of the main differences. And then there's a chemical process, which is a developer and a Blix, uh, both at 38 degrees. Um, so like I say, I've done some prints with those before. It's okay, like, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, I struggle with the colour correction side of it. It's, 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 I struggle to get my head around it. Um, so the other thing with colour, where have I put them? There we go. Slides. So the other thing I remembered I did, that I haven't done in ages, and actually don't do very often, is shooting slide film. So last last year, last summer it might have been, I went for a walk along the southwest coastal path with a couple of mates and shot a roll of ectochrome in medium format. Um, slide film is delicious. Like as a an item by itself, you're not gonna be able to see this very well, but they just they they are incredible to hold, uh, especially the medium format ones. I've done a couple of large format like as well, and they're just phenomenal. One of the things that puts me off shooting it is uh, the lack of an analog process for printing it. Because uh, I really enjoy just doing analog printing and not taking it to a computer. So I've never really kind of explored the op. Well, there aren't any options. There used to be one called Cibachrome or Ilfachrome, um, which they just it just isn't done anymore because um, I think it's going to do with the chemicals. They, to, they damage the environment too much so they've never brought it back and it, apparently it's quite a complicated and nasty process to do anyway so uh yeah you can't use that process but i remember when i did this one of the reasons i did it was because i wanted to see if i could use what's called the ra4 reversal process for printing um slide film now you may remember from the previous broadcast i used the ra4 reversal in a camera obscura I did a while ago um, so that was taking a positive image obviously because it's a positive image coming through the camera obscura capturing it on paper and developing it at written temperature chemicals 
um, which was okay. It's a bit, it's not a very precise process. Um, there's a lack of control over the, the color. It's very difficult to get the filtrations right. And because it's not a standardized process, you just kind of, there's a lot of variables involved, should we say. So I've also tried it um, ages ago. I tried it separately just using a large format camera. Um, so this is what the negative looks like if you just develop it in the normal process. And then this is the RA4 reversal. It took me quite a few attempts to even get that sort of color cast on it. Um, and it's not, it's all right. It's quite good fun to do there. Um, so what I wanted to do today was actually take a stab at sticking uh, the slide film in the enlarger, projecting that, and then um, doing the RO4 reversal. So I've got a positive image in the enlarger and then exposing to it. Now I've spent the best part of today practicing, not practicing, <laughs> trying to get it to work. Um, so let me show you where I'm at. Let's, I'll put it onto this camera because this camera's a bit better. <coughs> So, here we go. <laughs> uh, this is kind of where I started. I had a couple of prints prior to this where the exposure just wasn't good, good at all. Um, and this is where I'm at now. So I've changed the crop on the image slightly and I've just focused in on the, 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 uh, the bit of the gate there just to get a bit more, see what the detail in it is like. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's kind of, quite a drastic improvement the color cast is still like this ground here is quite yellow in real life um, so you can see I'm, I'm still quite far far off with that but I shall do a couple more tests while I'm streaming live so you can kind of see the actual process that's involved let's just move that out of the way right I need to get set up first uh, so let's go to multicam. That's a bit freaky angle, isn't it? You've got a head just in the shot there. Um, let's also try and just refocus this camera. On that. No, let's focus on me. Isn't it? It's pretty exciting. <laughs> uh, good evening, Tara. How are you doing? <laughs> on your big screen. Hi. Um, Right, so I need to get the chemicals. So the RA4 process, um, you can't, like, so the tests I've done before, I've done them at room temperature, just because it makes a lot more sense when you're out and about. But the best results I've been getting today is where I've heated the, the chemicals up to 38 degrees. So I've got, what have I got here? You start off with a black and white developer, which is going in here. So black and white paper developer in there. Then in this one I've got a stop bath. That's to stop it from developing. And then, then you turn the light on and you wash it um, to get rid of the chemicals from here. And you expose it to light. So that's how you create your, your inverse image. Then it's going to go into a, the colour dev. finally into the blicks. So these, I have heated these up to 38 degrees. As soon as I pour them in here, they're obviously going to drop a bit, but not too fast with that. It'll probably just affect the colour cast a bit. Um, right, so what variables are involved with this? Let's just go through all the things, all the stages. So you've got your slide in here. Now hopefully, if that's been developed correctly, it should be color correct. Uh, on the enlarger heads, you've got control of cyan, magenta, and yellow to change the filtration. So these, all these are variables that can adjust the final outcome of the image. You've got your exposure time onto the paper. You've got the paper type, if you're using different paper types as well. 
Um, your first stage in your developer, you've got the strength of the developer, you've got the temperature of the developer and the time in the developer. And then you've got stop and wash and turning the lights on. So you've got the length of time that it's exposed to light as well. Now the brief tests that I've done, that, that length of time doesn't seem to make any difference. Um, I don't know, maybe it would if it was for a, a very long period, but the, the tests that I've done between it being 30 seconds and a few minutes hasn't made any difference. Then you've got color developer. Um, again, you've got temperature and strength on that. And then the blicks, but I don't think it really makes much difference. These, like, I think that one probably does, but it's more about how long it takes for it to develop as opposed to it changing the results. And that's just to make sure everything's washed off and fixed. So the, these are kind of the key bits where your variables are but as you can see you've got like four or five variables there that can make quite a difference to, to the outcome so the other thing is this process the first stage needs to be done in complete darkness so you're not going to see much today um, well actually you'll see the you'll see the developer type part because I've got my infrared light on here um, but it, it won't take long to come out so I'll just do a full Exposure first. Okay, let's turn everything off. Oh, mobile phone turning on the process. Right, so for me it's pitch black. Hopefully you can see if I put my hand over here, no trace. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is get some paper out. So what I'm going to do is just do a full print at the settings I had about two hours ago, um, just to make sure nothing's changed. Okay, so I'm putting the paper into the easel. And you may see this exposing. Not during exposure prior. Should check that. Right, so now we take this over to the trays. Don't forget, this is complete darkness for me, so you might see me just kind of feeling around a bit, trying to find where the trays are. Okay. So in that goes like that. Start the timer. Give it a good slosh around. Now you might be able to see the image coming through in this. Okay. seconds in the stop. Not bad for complete darkness, eh? Hopefully, just where I turn the lights on and find out put it in the wrong tray. Okay, so am I going to take that out of there? Stick it in the wash. Let's give it a good around in there. OK, 
okay. So you might be able to see. So basically, we've got a black and white positive image here. Right. Stick that in the color developer. Smash that around. Start the timer. And put the main lights on. Trip over that. Let's move it. Right. <clears throat> well, that's quite off, isn't it? <laughs> Something's changed since I was in here last. Uh, I can't see that very well. Let's try and treat that over to a. Right, so I need to work with the exposure times and the colour filters on this. So there's, a, there's a wash over the whole thing. Right, let's just see who's in the chat. Whole camera as well, some sort of tracking autofocus on it. Um, I nerd yeah. Move you from oh hello, good evening. How's it going? <laughs> Great to see you, was it um Gilbert? Good to see you. Uh Tara, good to see you too. Thanks for popping by tonight. Um so let's bring this up. Right, so that's the bottom one. As you can see, it's way too light. And I don't know how well you can tell, but there's a massive colour cast over the whole thing. It's very kind of, it's very greeny blue. Right, so to adjust colours with RA4, this, this applies for uh, negative as well. You have to control the uh, cyan, magenta and the yellow. I've got this handy little chart here because my colour theory is rubbish. Um, and basically if it's on the chart, if it's too blue, for example, that means you simply add more yellow. Um, so yeah. So what I'm going to do is, I need to be darker for a start. I might do another test strip. Magenta. Right. 
Right, let's see what that brings. Um, do, 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 do. Question, is this the Joe Van Cleve, Brendan Barry direct positive? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Uh, I've, yeah, I've seen, actually I've seen some of the ones Brendan Barry's done. Um, I think I, I've read about this in a, an old forum somewhere first. Um, from years ago. Uh, who else? I saw somebody else doing it as well. I think it's a pretty well established way of trying to achieve positive prints. And also all the problems with it are well known as well. Right, so a test strip. Um, so what is a little bit, let's just see if I've got some card handy, yep. What's a little, fr oh, hold on, let's just uh, let's change the camera. Camera's gone anyway. Um, what's a little frustrating about that is I haven't really changed anything since I was in here last other than the chemicals were a little bit warmer which goes to show that <coughs> the impact of that is quite significant on the end result um, But let's just see if we get a bit of a card. All right. trays. So when working in the dark what I'm doing is using the edge of this big tray to determine where the inner tray is and hopefully I've left the tongs and everything in the same place. And then I know my stopwatch is there. Fingers crossed. Wash. Could really do picking up some more eight by ten trays.
better. Right. It's very difficult to tell what the actual <coughs> excuse me, colours like because the chemicals have got such a strong colour to them. So it's not where it's not until you get it in the wash and get rid of everything. Oh that's looking really nice. I did just do a small tweak to the filters as well and it looks like I've got pretty likes with it, that's fortunate. Shot of that. So this is a reversal process. Um, so with the test strip, the test strip is the other way around. <laughs> Are you saying you're feeling self-conscious because nobody else is in the chat? <laughs> I feel very self-conscious because no, I don't know who else is watching. <laughs> it's really weird, isn't it? This. Really odd. Anyway, I'll just carry on. Yeah, you know? just chat away. How's, how's things? You had a good Sunday. A good weekend. Uh, the, here's here's the latest one. Then got it's really bright on the screen there. Um, no, this is the latest one. <laughs> Get it the right way around. So the test strip. Oh, if you're doing a black and white print or negative print. The shortest amount of time will be the lightest one because this is reversal it's the darkest so the steps go for upwards like this um, and six steps on that so I'm going to do one two Much more yellow. Okay. I see Jimmy's here as well. He's doing different things. Hi, Jimmy. <laughs> Evening. How's things? <laughs> right. Let's turn off. Back up to the multicam. Can you actually see the enlarger when I'm exposing? You can see the image on the easel. Is it just too dark? Have you, uh, Gilbert, have you done any RA4 printing before? I very rarely do it. I just like... It doesn't seem as a... How do I describe it? Like, you can dodge and burn, right? But you don't... It, it doesn't feel as kind of... Like you've got as much creative input into it. Um, obviously you can change the colour, but that's kind of, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like there's as much 
flexibility is, is black and white. Um, and my, my I think my black and white photography is stronger than my colour photography, so I've always kind of um, just kind of moved away from it a bit. Um, but I do like this process; it's good fun. And I think maybe the quirkiness of it actually appeals to me. And also I struggle, I really struggle with getting the colours right. Um, so I think that's because of that, I'm put off from doing more of it. Just 10 seconds and stop. It's on. And in the wash we go. Have you guys got your own um, dark rooms? Because if you have, um, I'm going to be doing, I don't know if this has been announced yet. Anyway, it'd be great to talk to you at some point. <laughs> Just for some like, little interviews and insights into your, uh, your processes and what you do. Right, oh, I didn't really expose that to light. Hmm, let's see what happens. <laughs> Normally I stick it right in front of the light. Make sure it's exposed. Exposure's looking really good on this one. Happy days. The other thing is, these chemicals absolutely reek. <laughs> Get in. <laughs> this is looking great. A little wash. Oh. Right, what are you all chatting about?
Uh, right. Jimmy. Well, in my mind, I'm done. <laughs> I can call it quits. <laughs> Game over. Look at that. <laughs> Let's bring up the scan. The other thing I don't like about colour, <laughs> it's really confusing, isn't it? So every step along the way, there's like you're interpreting the colour. So for even from a scan, how it's processed on the computer, and then how it's output, then how it's displayed on all your screens, is completely different to what the actual negative looks like. So it's all interpreted. But as a comparison, they are looking pretty close. Not bad considering it's a reversal process. I'm fairly happy with that. I'm very happy with that. <laughs> um, I think there's a lot of luck involved in that one tonight. <laughs> well, for some reason I can't see the, your, the chat. Um, let me just try and bring it up in a browser. Hold on. It looks like you. Uh... Oh, freaky! It's myself. Right, let's wind things back. Um, I wonder if there's any way I can. I can bring this up here look at that bit of technology so <coughs> dark room stuff um Jimmy's waiting to do some black and white printing, but not got the energy to you. Tell me about it. <laughs> it's so, once you get started though, it's, you'll be fine. You've done it before though, haven't you? I think. Um, Gilbert has never done colour. Really looking forward to starting when you do your MA. Yeah, I, I, so I normally use, for RA4, I've got the Nova slot processors that have got the um, water bath built in, um, which makes doing RA4 ridiculously easy um, from a processing point of view. So in trays, what you, you can have to, you can get those like heated um, mats, can't you, to put them on. Sounds like a bit of a ball lake to me. Tara wishes she had one. You could totally set one up, Tara. It's really like for a basic enlarger. Let's hurry up with lockdown because then I'll give you a hand with that. Bathroom is a great place to set up because you've got everything you need. Like I've seen brilliant setups where people have like a bit of board fitted to go perfectly over their bath. And they just can go in, put it down, and everything's good to go. Um, takes them five minutes to set up and, and wash down. And Mark's here as well. Good evening, Mark. Hope you're okay. So, um, I'm going to call it wraps <laughs> because I'm more than happy with that. 
In fact, I'm so happy with it. I'm going to bring it up again. <laughs> Ta da! Um, I think what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to write these settings down and then I'm going to go through exactly the same process with a lot cooler chemicals tomorrow at room temperature and see what the colour differences are. And then what I'll do is I will scan those and stick them both on my social media so you can check out the differences there um, at a later date. So if you're not following me already, um, I am The Dark Shed. got to work out how to do that. I am at The Dark Shed on all platforms. Um, and yeah, tune in next, I'll probably do another broadcast next Sunday. Um, so great to see you all. Take care and uh, hope you've had a great weekend. Bye.